welcome and if you're a returning viewer as well welcome and thank you for stopping by again if you're yet to subscribe to my channel please do that now the button is just there help me to get this movement going. so as you might know i'm a nigerian currently doing my master's degree in france so on my channel i share about how i got here um, how to find a school the language and i also try to show you around my city so uh if you are interested in that kind of content definitely stick around and share this video with you today i'll be talking about why i started learning french or how i started learning french and the resources that have helped me um, in that time so that you can also use them if you're interested in learning the language i started to learn french at the end of september 2020 um i just thought about my life and i determined <laughs> within myself that um being fluent in french was going to be good for my career and it was going to be you know good for where i was trying to go with my life and open me up to more opportunities so yes i started learning and i started to learn with duolingo you might have heard of the app um of course i started with the uh free version not the premium version i started with the free version and that was good it was helpful i didn't really realize it until much later so at the time after maybe three months or something by december they told me that we had learned over two thousand something something words and i'm like oh that's great i didn't know that but i mean it was just great to come across things that would have been gibberish to you before and then just realize that oh i actually know what this word means i actually know what this thing means that was just great and satisfying at the end of December, I realized that I actually needed to be in a classroom if I wanted to move faster. So I had a nine to five. So obviously I wasn't going to go to a physical French class every day of the week because I had to be at work. So I found a school that offers online courses. Um, and then I registered and I started. We had classes, I think, twice a week. Um, and then it was about one and a half or two hours per time or something so it was great that was when i actually realized that duolingo was very helpful because um i could understand a lot of the things i already knew numbers i already knew the months i already knew some colors i already knew you know a lot of words how to introduce myself that kind of thing but then of course the class was still helpful because there were a lot of things that i didn't know that we were taught in class but the duolingo just made that transition or the settling down much easier than it would have been if i didn't do that i started asking questions okay so if it took us one month to do like one little module of many how long is it going to take me to actually get fluent in this thing and then they said oh because i'm not coming to class every day and it's not intensive um it would take me two years and i'm like <laughs> i don't have two years to give you people i don't have two years like so I started thinking, okay, I need to find a school that they move faster. Apparently, you know, all these things have like advantages and disadvantages. I did find another school that was moving faster. Um, and then I enrolled. It was still online. I was joining. Everything was going well until it was time for me to proceed to B1. And I knew in my heart of hearts that my friend's skill level was not B1. Like there was no way I was moving to B1 especially with my speaking and my listening skills i was like i'm not i'm definitely not a b1 i dropped out i essentially told them that oh i wasn't ready to move to b1 um so i just said to myself that i was going to find resources online to do a lot of self-learning um which was what i did and i did a ton of research i found useful resources actually so let me backtrack a little bit before now i told myself that oh, the best way to actually track my progress or whether i was learning anything really was to take exams so in lagos of course you can write delf exams the a1 b1 a2 b2 exams so i registered for a1 exams i think in march of 2021 i wrote it 
and then the results came and i had like 78.5 over 100 i'm like yeah smiling about somebody <laughs> but on a serious note like that was great for me because i was just like let me just pass french language whatever but the benchmark the pass mark is 50 percent so if i had scored 50 over 100 i would have passed that exam so like having 78 i was just like oh this is great maybe i'm not as bad as i thought i was or maybe these things are more helpful than i actually thought that they were so um I was in the other school, the new school that I went to, and of course, when I told myself I wasn't ready, I, I knew that I was not B1 candidate yet. So I decided I was going to write my A2 exams to even see where I was at. So I wrote that, and I had a 75, if I'm not mistaken, over 100. Um, and my biggest problem for the two were the listening, and I knew because. As I've said before in another video, French people really speak fast. So what they do is that, you know how in IELTS, they play you the listening test at a regular pace um, and then they don't play it again here because I think they realize that French people really speak fast. They play the clip twice, but then there are like 10 questions that you're supposed to answer. So if you're not following, if you don't really understand the word, if they're too fast for you, you're not going to be able to answer 10 questions. And obviously, I wasn't able to answer 10 questions. So, like, I was scoring, like, just 10 over 20 or 10 something, like, half mark on my listening. And then I was passing the other one. So that was what kept pulling me back to, like, 70 something and all. So coming back, I said I was going to find resources for self-learning. And I did. I found a ton of resources and websites. So I registered for the Alliance Frances Library in Lagos. I think it was like 3,000 naira a year or something like that. Like it was ridiculously cheap. I was like, there's no way I'm not taking advantage of this. And then, you know, when you register for that, they also give you access to the e-library, which was really, really good for me because when I had access to the actual library, so I could borrow books, I would just go there and, you know, borrow a book. I could hold it for two weeks. Half the time, because of my schedule, really, I couldn't finish like each novel in two weeks but i mean i went far enough to learn new words i understood majority of what i read based on context the words that maybe i couldn't really figure out i would check the dictionary for that and all and then the e-library also had like documentaries short video clips um exercises just really useful things especially for a beginner so of course there are different levels so you have resources for a1 a2 b1 b2 c1 c2 um, depending on your level and then you can choose which ones you want to do and that was just really great for me then uh after that i did some research online and i found textbooks for the different levels and then test test exams for a1 a2 b1 b2 and also TEF. um so i was just like well, i'm just going to be practicing with this and then it will help me because if i'm reading as if i'm preparing for an exam maybe it will help me and all of that so i did that as well um, I also took a diploma course. Someone shared information with me about a diploma course in French that was subsidized. Um, so I did that as well. And interestingly, I passed. So I was like, when am I actually going to start speaking French so that all this head knowledge that I have can come to fruition? But yeah, that happened. So I have a diploma saying that I'm actually skilled in French language, okay? Apart from my A1 and A2 exams which by the way they also gave me certificates for um so that's actually good like you have proof of the progress that you're making um and you know on the days where you're just like oh my god when am i actually going to get fluent you remind yourself of the progress that you've made and all of that then i also discovered a website called tv5 month they actually have tv shows they have um learning resources short documentaries people's experiences of the french culture in different parts of the world uh, and of course like it's free i think they have a paid version but like the the regular one is free and they don't play you ads or any of those annoying things so it's really good it's really useful um and then i think at the beginning you also take a placement test just so that um they know what particular level you're supposed to start learning from you can choose where you want to start but just so that they know your level and where you're actually supposed to be at um, you take a placement test. I used all of these resources and I think that they all came in handy. So I'm going to link um, the app, the website in the description box. 
But then if you want some of the resources that I was able to download, maybe send me a DM on Instagram and I will upload somewhere and share the link with you guys. Trust me, it is not as difficult as it looks or as it sounds. It's actually very interesting. I think the thing that we struggle with the most as Nigerians or as non-native French people is speaking. Um, so if you can find a way to hack that, um, maybe find people to speak with or practice with, that would be good. There are actually a lot of French-speaking people in Lagos, you'd be surprised. Um, and, you know, when you start a new experience is when you actually realize the people around you that probably have the same experience or are interested in that kind of thing. So you find partners. I hope that this has been useful to you. Please remember to subscribe, love, and share this video. And I will see you in my next one. A bientôt